Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSRHealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSRHealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. in all things in beauty. Welcome to Radio AMB, designed for those who want to live a long and vibrant life. I'm Patty Smucker, your host, and someone who's been in the beauty business for over 40 years. Radio AMB, which stands for American Made Beauty, is the place where we tell the, the secrets behind the making of health, beauty, and wellness products and brands. This segment sponsor uh, for today is AmericanMadeBeauty.com. It's a beauty platform designed to help consumers find beauty companies that are implementing the industry's best practices to bring you quality products and services. Go to AmericanMadeBeauty.com and find beauty products and services that meet a strict set of standards that reflect their American heritage. You know, as the Olympics uh, now comes to an end, I've noticed that the place I work out in has a new surge of people hitting the gym with an inspiration to be physically healthy. I work out at the largest non-hotel YMCA in the United States. About 20 years ago, with teenagers at home, I was attracted to the YMCA as a place for the whole family to find a place to work out. What I've learned is that YMCA's Worldwide, uh, which is a worldwide organization, is so much more than a gym. Our Y became the center of our family community, and I, and I learned that the important work that they do in communities to serve families from cradle to grave. After years of the Y being the epicenter of my life, I found what has become one of my best friends, who, like my guest today, is one of the amazing individuals that has dedicated themselves to a career path in the Y, which means an opportunity to play an instrumental role in strengthening the foundation of communities through youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. We think this is pretty darn important work. During our feature interview, you'll meet the executive director of the Torrance South Bay YMCA, Steve McEller. We'll hear how he has started his career in the YMCA organization, how he's evolved his career to be in a leadership role of one of the premier Ys in the United States, and what the YMCA organization is all about. You'll learn how after over 170 years, the YMCA's around the world is a thriving organization playing such an important role in the lives of people of all ages. During our segment we call in the jar, we'll talk about the secret sauce the Y today is using with a new approach to personal training, helping those of us who have a tendency to stop and start working out and being healthy. During our segment we call Beauty That Sold Deep, we'll focus on a condition that in 1980 affected 180, 108 million people in the world, but by 2014 over 422 million people have been affected. Among adults 18 years of age and older, diabetes is almost doubled in the worldwide population from 4.7% in 1980, it was 8.5% in 2014. We'll hear about the important initiative that is underway to help educate and overcome diabetes. Finally, we'll wrap out with our Beauty Biz segment where we'll learn from Steve how YMCAs across America are funded and their, P and their roles in being part of uh, communities. So let's get started. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about Steve. Uh, Steve began his career in the YMCA the way many Y career professionals start, by participating in camp and aquatics program at, the, at his local YMCA in Thousand Oaks, California, where he grew up. In 1980, Steve's YMCA career began as a junior counselor at a Y summer camp. 
During the last 25 years, Steve, his wife Beth, who is also a YMCA career professional, and their daughters Annie and Sophia have been on the east coast of the United States part of the time with Independent Health Family Branch YMCA in Buffalo, New York, and the Carson, uh, Carson um, Metric Metro Center YMCA in Rochester, New York. Steve joined the Torrance South Bay YMCA staff team in January 2016 after returning to the West Coast as Executive Director at the Weingart YMCA Wellness and Aquatic Center in South Los Angeles. Welcome, Steve. I'm delighted to have you with us today. Oh, thank you, Patty. I'm pleased to be here. Thank you. So, so Steve, let's set the stage. Um, when you went to summer camp as a junior counselor, how old were you? I was at the, the ripe old age of 13 years old, and 13. I'll, I'll never forget that day. I was one of those campers that, you know, the staff members would kind of roll their eyes if they found out I was in their group. And so the director, you know, that first day came up and told me, Steve, you know, I, I think that we're going to do something different. I'm going to have you be a junior counselor. And at first I said, you're kidding me. I don't want to work with kids. <laughs> um, but what I learned in that experience and watching the amazing leadership of the counselor that I worked with that summer really launched my career. And what was it? What was it about that experience that, um, that, that, that launched your career? You know, I think it was the fact that, the, that, that I had the opportunity to see that I could make an impact in somebody's life. You know, the kid that needs help tying their shoe or the kid that reaches up and grabs your hand walking up the trail. Just, you know, you see firsthand what an impact just having somebody that cares about a child outside of the family unit can have, and that's really one of the biggest penance that the YMCA is all about, is just positive impact in our community, kids, adults, families, seniors. Right. And so, for, for, you know, many people have never really had that kind of connection um, and, and been involved with the YMCA. So for our, for our listeners, let's go back a little bit and make sure that people really understand um, the, the history and um, what the YMCA is all about. Um, I do a little research, and, and, and uh, because of the years that I've been involved, I never realized before I was involved with the Y that the Y actually started in London, England in 1844. That's right. It was started by a gentleman by the name of George Williams, and he actually founded the YMCA um, as, as an opportunity for uh, young men who were coming in from the farms to work in the factories during the Industrial Re Revolution in London, England, um, to, for them to be able to come together and really do, do a Bible study. It really started as more of a Bible study, um, but a gathering to sort of give these young men an opportunity to have a positive experience as opposed to, you know, those, quote, evils that were out in the city, you know, all those other things that could be less of a positive influence, if, if I may. And, right, uh, So right. it really started that way to impact those young men and, and has evolved as a movement, you know, over the past some 160 years, 770 years, to really, uh, you know, respond to whatever those societal needs are that are going on at the time, you know, during the World Wars, the YMCA started the USO and, and it actually had, uh, you know, YMCAs set up, you know, near or out on the battlefields uh, for the soldiers. And, uh, you know, as we evolved further into, uh, you know, into the 1970s, 1980s, you know, society evolved, more moms were working, so the YMCA started providing child care and expanded from just doing residential camping and day camping to child care. Now, you know, in the era that we're seeing, you mentioned diabetes prevention, you now chronic disease prevention, you know, the YMCA has really tried to address that and been in the forefront of that. And now, you know, we, we really see our society being challenged in so many ways. There's so many conflicts. And I just came back from a national convention called General Assembly where we talked about how the YMCA is uniquely positioned to really make an impact and, and, and really address the societal challenges we have, the different inequities between, you know, racial inequities, economic inequities, health inequities. Uh, you know, the Y can really be that, that starting point to really reach out to the community and, and be that forefront solution. Well, you know, it's interesting because that, 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 that is the sort of the core tenets, these societal inequities and its ability as an organization for over 160 years to rise up uh, to, to meet whatever the society challenges are. 
you know, um, Young Men's Christian Association is what YMCA stands for, which could have been really evolved as an exclusive club, but instead it's become, it's, it's always been very diverse and inclusive. Do you think that part of the success um, over all this year, the, all these, this period of time, has been because they have stayed clear on their core tenets and values, but have been able to be um, receptive to what was going on in the marketplace? I do. You know, the fact that the YMCA, you know, we define ourselves as a movement, and it really is a movement because we're all about people, we're all about community, and, and you know, to your point, community needs change. Community mm -hmm. needs oh, We're a much different world than we were in 1844, and therefore the Y is a much different why? But I think, you know, every YMCA has a mission statement, every Y in the U.S., but what's common to all of them is the last two words of the mission statement, which is for all. Mm -hmm. So it's not just for Christians. It's not just for young men. It's for anybody who has a need that the YMCA can help with. That's really what we're trying to do. Right. It's definitely for, uh, for all. And so when, um, when the organization, what, what do you think was the spark that cr created the uh, opportunity for uh, the organization to come out of Europe and, and across the Atlantic to the United States? You know, I, to be quite honest with you, I'm embarrassed to say I don't know exactly what precipitated that. I know the Boston Y opened really as a residence um, in, six years after uh, it was founded in, in 1844 in London. Um, and it, it really started, you know, again, it was an industrial revolution type of piece, so it kind of followed that same model, but quickly evolved into providing primarily housing uh, for a lot of these young men who were working. Uh, and that it actually still is one of the last remaining residential YMCAs in the country. Most of those have gone by the wayside, but there's a handful of residential Ys left, and Boston's one of them. Yeah, and actually, I've stayed in one in New York, and it does, it did feel very much of what I think it would have felt like during an earlier era with a, a little teeny room and the shower down the hall. Um, but it was, it was really um, very cool. Um, so tell us about someone who chooses to make a career. When did you know that you um, would, would, would make this a career path? Well, you know, mine was sort of a, a Zigzag line, if you will. I mean, I, I've always, I've always stayed connected to the YMCA, regardless of what I was doing elsewhere in my life. And so, when I started, you know, as a junior counselor, I evolved to, to a number of different part-time jobs that high school kids would would evolve into, like lifeguard and eventually camp counselor, and worked in the child care centers. Uh, you know, I would, I'd sweep the floor if that's what they needed. We all kind of were all hands on deck. Um, and and then it was just sort of what I did. I don't think I was thinking career-wise yet. But as I, as I moved on and, um, into organized camping, both through the YMCA and in special needs camping, met my wife, um, you know, I always had that sense that I wanted to have a connection to the YMCA wherever I was. Mm -hmm. And I really started my, my long-term professional career, really launched when I was back east in Rochester. And uh, that was my first executive director position at the downtown YMCA in Rochester, Carlson Metro Center. And then... And the bug really bit me, and I said, mm -hmm. this, this is what I need to do. This is where I belong. This is home. And, uh, you know, it's hard to articulate exactly what it was, but it was that feeling of being settled and knowing that, you know, this, I, this might not be the only why I work at, but I'm always going to work at a why. Mm -hmm. And and what is it? I mean, I, I understand the whole thing in terms of feeling like you make a difference with the kids. But as a career, and really um, feeling some sense of satisfaction, and I and I ask this in part because I, I sort of um, I have a, a, a ringer in my pocket. My best girlfriend is an executive director at the Whittier YMCA, so we've had these conversations, and, and I love to hear what is it about the organization that keeps you stimulated and inspired to show up and and do this important work. You know, it's, it's, it's the people. It's the mm -hmm. fact that it's not just the, the kids, which it's great to see impact in kids' lives, but here at the Torrance South Bay Y, we have a very sizable senior nutrition program where we serve up to, I think, 50 or 60,000 meals a year uh, here at the Torrance Branch in Carson and in Redondo Beach. And um, the impact that that has on those seniors in the community that's there, the families that come, you mentioned that, you know, your Y experience started when you had a young family, and that's true for so many of our members. We really believe in, in serving the whole family. So just the opportunity to meet all the different people, but also 
being able to go out into the community and tell the story, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, every opportunity I have to sort of tell the story of the why and make sure people know that we're here, uh, make sure people know what we do and that we want to be able to, to help in any way we can. Um, you know, I kind of liken it to, you know, your, your favorite part of the movie, right, is when the good guys come. You know, like I remember Han Solo in The Last Star Wars. The planes are flying and he goes, the good guys are here. You know, uh-huh. I feel like the why is the good guys. We're the good right, guys. We're right. the ones who, who and, want to and... make a difference, want to help. Yeah, absolutely. And Steve, tell all of the different things because the, the the you said fifty thousand meals a year that your that 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 the, the Torrance South Bay YMCA serves multiplied by that. How many do you know? How many Y's there are across the country? I'm not aware of any other YMCA's that are doing that particular program. Uh huh. That's something that's very unique about the Torrance South Bay YMCA, and I think it really illustrates an important point that we're talking about today, where. Uh, you know, we perceive, we meaning the YMCA, perceive the need in our community for a senior lunch program. Mm-hmm. There wasn't one there, and we were seeing a lot of seniors who had a need for that. So the Port South Bay YMCA secured funding and partnered with the county and with the health department, and we were able to start that. And that was some years ago. I mean, I think this program is going on at least 20 years now. And, you know, right now across the hall from me, I can tell you there's probably about 100 or maybe even 120 seniors who are going to be having lunch in about 30 minutes. Right, right. And that's what's special about the WISE is they are built for each of the communities. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the last segment. But but, but help me um, within just the Torrance YMCA, tell us about all of the other programs. Um, I know 50,000 meals each year to seniors in your community. How many uh, child care uh, children are you guys taking care of every year? Well, we have right now we have 14 child care sites, including one preschool site. We're on all of the almost all of the campuses of uh, Torrance Elementary Schools, mm-hmm. and uh, between all of those sites, we serve close to a thousand children a day. Uh, we also run summer day camp, and we serve several hundred children a day in our summer day camp programs. Uh, we also have a program that I think is a very important program these days, which is our parent-child program for fathers and their children or mothers and their children. Um, and that's based out of Manhattan Beach here in Torrance and then also out in Carson. And uh, it, it's a program that brings parents and children together to really spend time together. They go camping trips. They do different outings. They do different challenges with other parents and children. And the neat thing is that in today's, uh, you know, when there's so much competition for all of our time, it makes you carve out time to spend that time together with your child and with your parent, but also there's really great relationships that form between the kids and between the parents, and we have over a 1,000 participants in that program as well, so that's one we're very proud of. A number of different youth sports programs that we offer here, we're actually just beginning the process of uh, not only offering our youth sports programs here, which are both instructional and league programs, but we're also getting those out into the community. We're going to be partnering uh, with the local high school uh, to be able to offer programs on site so that some of those communities where transportation may be an issue, we're mm-hmm. going to try to make it accessible and get back closer to those communities so that's not a barrier for them. Right. Uh, and then we have a number of different healthy living programs, aquatics programs, swim lessons, which is so important to, to get kids safe in the water. And then to, also for our seniors, we have a number of uh, arthritis uh, classes in the water, which are, really make a huge impact. Some of those programs will have 50 or 60 participants in a class. Right. So really, I mean, cradle to grave, and I also know that uh, one of the other ones that you do with the seniors is uh, various different types of trips. So taking, you know, several times a year you have a busload or more of seniors that get together and and uh, go on various different programs um, that's even out of the state. Yeah, that's true. And a lot of those programs, a lot of those excursions, that's the same group of seniors who are coming for lunch and attending our classes. So it's really building a community. And, and a lot of times this is, you know, this could be the only social time that they have with others. Um, but it's great to see the relationships that are built when people are going on those trips and coming here for lunch and attending the classes. It really, there are strong relationships at every table in that room. Right, and I think that that's why part of the reason why I think this is an important story that we're telling relative to beauty is the whole idea that people being connected and and having that sense of belonging is part of people thriving and living that very very vibrant life. That that do you find that that's part of the work? That's as much a segment of the work as you do as how you build those relationships among people. Um, is an important part of the work that you do as well. 
That, that's so true. I think that if we've done our jobs right, those relationships will, will flourish naturally with people. And uh, it, it's really something that we want to be intentional about making the right setting for that to happen because it really is important. There's, there's data upon data upon data these days that draws a direct correlation between those who are between the age of 70 and 100 who are attending programs like our excursion program, our senior nutrition program, our classes, um, and that also have a social component and the longevity of their, their lives. So these people who are coming here on a regular basis, they're healthier, they're living longer, and they're living more, a higher quality of life because they're mm-hmm. getting the opportunity to volunteer, they're getting the opportunity to socialize, they're getting good nutritious meals. We even have a program where we deliver meals to homes and we'll deliver pet food if they need that for their pets. Wow. Okay. All right. And that that one that one I hadn't heard before. So we just one more one more area that you're servicing. So how do you know? How what are the what's the mechanism that you are being able to identify those particular needs that are going on in the community? Well, we have a very connected board. So a lot of times our board members will come to us and and, and they're tuned into what's happening in the community and, and they can kind of identify where we need to focus. Uh, or we have community partners uh, that will go ahead and tell us of a, a need that they're addressing and could we partner with them. And a lot of it is through collaboration and partnership. Right, and I know that uh, collaboration with uh, education as well as the medical community uh, within within the, the local area. All right, well, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, in our segment we call In the Jar, we're going to learn a, a, a little bit about the unique secret sauce the why in the wise jar, uh, the new approach to personal training for those of us who want to be healthy but have a tendency to start and then stop again. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Over here, here's a secret for a virus-free computer. ESET, they've been a pioneer in the antivirus industry for over 25 years. 25 years of innovative, top-rated antivirus protection. ESET's award-winning security solutions provide a safe online experience for over 100 million home and business computer owners. They are so affordable, fast, and simple to use. So be gone, you blue screen of death. ESET's on my computer. If it's not on yours, visit HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on ESET now. Here's the thing about beauty. It's pretty. At AmericanMadeBeauty.com, we're all about the pretty, making it easier for you to find what makes your beauty shine. We have essentially everything you need, and AmericanMadeBeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the U.S. of A. Imagine everything you need from the best hair, skin, and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We also think you're pretty important, so visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Browse, buy, learn. AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credentialed category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bottled brands that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. To learn how you can be part of AmericanMadeBeauty.com, visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com now. What does HealthyLife.net and Amazon.com have in common? Well, they're both available on the Internet. They both give great value. But most important, most of our positive program hosts and guests are accomplished authors. And their books are available from, you got it, Amazon.com. Now it even gets better than that. Because when you're listening on air to a HealthyLife.net host or guest, you can go directly to Amazon.com and you can order your book while you're still listening to your favorite HealthyLife.net program. So when you hear an author you like, go to the homepage of HealthyLife.net and click on Amazon.com. Where positive people and radio unite. HealthyLife.net You're listening to Radio AMB on HealthyLife.net. Welcome back. I'm Patty Smucker, and I'm here with Steve McKellar, Executive Director of the largest non-hotel YMCA in America. Steve, during uh, the years that I've served on the board, we talked about serving the community uh, of people who tended to start and stop working out. That was sort of one of the things that, I, that stuck in my mind from years of being on the board. Um, is that still the population that you're serving today? 
Yes, I mean, obviously, we, we want to serve everybody in the community, but we found several years ago as a movement, the YMCA identified that about 85% of people who were in the community were really what we would call health seekers, where they really wanted to try to achieve certain wellness goals, but they didn't know exactly how to be successful with doing that, so they would start, they would stop, and oftentimes see a little bit of success, but then follow that with a little bit of failure, get discouraged. And so, you know, it was really a challenge. So we really tried to reinvent a lot of what we did here at the YMCA all the way down to how we designed the different wellness areas to be health seeker friendly, to really mm -hmm. make it non-intimidating. Um, you know, these are people who are going to drive around the parking lot for half an hour just working up the nerve to walk through the front door. Right. It's true. I see, I see them do it. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be welcoming and we want to make sure that we do everything we can to really support health seekers to, to increase that, that progress and increase that opportunity for success. Mm -hmm. and, and so how, uh, how are you changing your focus to serve that, that, that growing by that population? 85% I mean, of the community, they're health seekers. Um, and, and I think that it's a common story that we, that we want it, we want to go after it, we do a little bit, and then, and then we backslide. So well, tell us a little bit about one of the things that uh, you're help doing to make some changes there. Well, I think, first of all, we've really, we, we've learned, and this is actually based on what, you know, statistics, what people actually self-report, that 85% of people actually self-identify. And, and they've also told us some of those reasons why um, they, they haven't been successful. It's something that we've really, a big learning that's come out of that is that people need individual support. Mm -hmm. And so we've really, here at the Torrance South Bay YMCA, we've followed the lead of a number of other successful Ys in the country and really... Um, we're starting to offer personal training, and personal training can be on a one-on-one -on -one basis or it can be a small group because some people might be comfortable working with a friend. Mm -hmm. That also makes it a little bit more affordable if cost is a factor, but we also offer financial assistance. We don't want that to be a barrier. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea of personal training is to really be able to sit down with a trainer, you know, for a health seeker to be able to sit down with a trainer and identify what success looks like. You know, success is going to look different for me as it would for you just because our goals and our, our, our objectives are going to be different based on where we are. So it's that opportunity to really personalize. And it's also the opportunity to say, you know what, don't even take me to the pool. I'm terrified of the water. Okay, let's think about other things we can do. So it really gives us the opportunity to customize our approach. And it's not just about what exercises we're going to do and how often we're going to do them and what machinery we're going to use. That will be part of the plan, but it's also that dialogue. And, again, I'm going back to that relationship word, that connection mm -hmm. that our people are able to have with their trainers. Uh, we really are intentional about building those relationships. There's phone calls to check in between appointments. And there's that level of mutual accountability where the trainer is partnering with you to really make sure – your position for success. Right, right. And and because of the fact that there's so much that goes into a lifelong um, habit of healthy living that's beyond just the exercise, I love what you're saying, that it's about the relationship and also taking into consideration all of those other factors that play a role in uh, being helpful. I know you guys do a lot with regards to education as far as diet and food. Can you tell me a little bit about more about that? Yeah, that, that, I mean, there really has to be a holistic approach to wellness. I think if there's anything we've learned as a society, you know, that there's that. There, it really is spirit, mind, body. And mm -hmm. so, yes, the, the, there's an exercise and wellness component that's very important. There's also a, um, a, a spiritual component, and that might look very differently from one person to the next, but really tuning into what makes us who we are and what, what we believe, what are our values. And then also there's a nutritional component, you know, what are we putting in our bodies and, and what are those things that we can, that we can make changes and positive changes. Um, you know, I myself am a health seeker, and that's something that I'm looking for help with, with, with my trainer is just, you know, I need to eat healthier and I need to exercise more. And I mean, like I have an excuse, I work here for crying out loud, but that's <laughs> it's even a barrier for me, you know, and that's, that's what we see. So, but it's really taking that holistic approach to talk about the whole person, you know, what's happening at home, what are some things that can be changed there to support you, you know, when you come here to the Y, what do we need as an environmental factor for you? You know, and, and just, just try to look at the whole person. 
Right, right. Now, you mentioned something that was interesting, and that's that, uh, about the financial. If, if, it, if there is a financial barrier, one of the things I love about the why is that people are never turned away for an inability to pay. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that philosophy. Yeah, you know, that, that's something that I'm probably the most passionate about when it comes mm -hmm. to the YMCA because, you know, what I fear, something that keeps me up at night is, you know, how many people are out here in the Torrance South Bay will meet a community who don't realize that we will help them if they can't afford the cost of the programs. We, mm -hmm. we have financial assistance available, and we really we want to get that word out. We want to celebrate that because the last thing I would ever want is for cost to be a barrier. We already have enough barriers put in front of us to wellness. I, I, cost should not be one. And so mm -hmm. we, do, we do want to make sure that people know we'll meet them where they are and we'll do whatever we can to help them. Right, right. And when um, when I've and I've seen some some uh, good opportunities with single parents that have come in and it gives them sort of a center where their 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 kids, particularly kids going through a tough time with a divorce and things like that, that now all of a sudden this becomes a safe haven for the family to hang out. Exactly, and there you know I've I've gotten calls, uh, you know in, in every way I've worked at I've always gotten those calls. I'll never forget there was one a school teacher called me. There was a second grader in her class who just lost his father, and he was devastated. And his mm -hmm. mom, all she wanted was just to try to bring some normalcy to his life. And she said, you know, a lot of his friends go to Hawaii, but I can't afford it. Is there any way to get him in? And the teacher called me, and we were able to reach out to that family and say, of course we want him here. Let, let's make this happen today. That that's what we're all about. Right, right. And and also another um, aspect that makes the, the whole system work, I think, too, is um, the, you guys create a lot of opportunities for uh, people to volunteer. And we're, we've run a little short on this segment. Well, when we come back, let's talk a little bit about some of the ways that you get kids involved at an early age contributing and volunteering um, in, in the centers. So we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll uh, talk a little bit about volunteering and also um, diabetes and, and some important initiatives that the Y is doing uh, to help educate people on how to manage uh, this crippling disease that's affecting our societies. So we'll be right back. Here's the thing about beauty. It's pretty. At AmericanMadeBeauty.com, we're all about the pretty, making it easy for you to find what makes your beauty shine. We have essentially everything you need, and AmericanMadeBeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the U.S. of A. Imagine everything you need from the best hair, skin, and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We also think you're pretty important, so visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Browse, buy, learn. AmericanMadeBeauty.com. For all your live or pre-recorded webcasting needs, come to earthchannel.com. Get your web-based message out to a select group or the whole world. It's easy. A pioneer in webcasting, earthchannel.com provides the best products and services to big corporations and government users. And now, this same technology is available to you. They have the best earthcast encoders, servers, and products to meet your technical needs. But wait, don't want to mess with technical stress? No problem. They'll do it for you. EarthChannel.com is your answer. You can use webcasting for lots of things like advertising, marketing, customer support, training, and don't forget, web radio and TV. In fact, you're listening to a live EarthCast right now. So come to EarthChannel.com. Actualize your audio or video webcasting needs today. You can't beat the friendly service or the price. Call EarthChannel.com at 1-800-849-8978. That's 1-800-849-8978. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credentialed category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bottled brands that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. To learn how you can be part of AmericanMadeBeauty.com, visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com now. When you're looking for bedding, department store prices can shock you. 
We'll be shocked no more. Sell steak cheap, not cheap steak. That's the motto of Anna's Linens. Although they don't sell steak, they do sell the best bedding, bath, and home decor items. They strive to provide their merchandise at extreme value to their customers, and they do it. Great everyday prices on everything and military discounts. Plus, if you visit them online, they have clearance items and Internet specials. Visit them online now at HealthyLife.net's advertiser page. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net. Welcome back. You're listening to Radio AMB on HealthyLife.net. I'm your host, Patty Smucker, and we're here with the Executive Director of the Torrance YMCA, Steve McEller. This is the segment that we call um, Beauty That's Soul Deep, and there's nothing that's more soul-stirring than the opportunity to give of oneself. So, Steve, tell us a little bit about how um, important volunteering is as far as the overall Y program. Well, the YMCA wouldn't be able to survive without all of our volunteers, and we have hundreds of volunteers who are working every day to support the work of the Torrance South Bay YMCA. They they work in our uh, senior nutrition program, on our excursion program. Uh, they volunteer with our different children's programs, with our youth sports programs. And, of course, our board of managers, our policy volunteers, are 50 wonderful people from the community who are helping um, guide, you know, the direction of our organization. So they really are the lifeblood. And uh, as as you referred to in the past segment, you know, we, we really start people young. Um, two of our programs that we offer for middle school and high school children uh, are the Model United Nations uh, program for our middle school children and our uh, Model Legislature program for high school children. And these are programs where they actually assume different roles that would be assumed in different legislative bodies, the Model United Nations program, people, different groups in the what, why, uh, actually represent different countries from around the world. Model legislature, there's a judicial branch, there's a senate branch, all these different uh, you know areas to get involved. And a big component of those programs is leadership, and one of the requirements that all the kids have is to volunteer. So we see those kids, you know, high school, middle school kids volunteering for some of our special events that are coming. They're setting up, heavily involved in our campaigns for fundraising. Uh, and it really starts the process early for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and I know, I, again, I, that was really one of the ways that we that I got so involved is is being involved in in some of the various different uh, programs from the um, Y exceptional training, customer service training, and um, uh, getting involved with some of the fundraising. We'll talk about a little bit in our final segment. But when we talked initially about um, having you on the show, you mentioned to me some initiatives around diabetes. Um, I did a little research, which I mentioned in the opening segment. I was blown away to realize that um, just since, since um, 1980, the number of people worldwide affected for, uh, by diabetes has grown from 108 million to 422 million people in 2014. That's, a, that's almost double. Um, tell us a little bit about why, why um, this has become a, a real focus of, and, and an initiative that you're, you guys are undertaking. Well, I think that it really, you know, the fact is that statistic is even more staggering because those are the cases that we're aware of, and we actually estimate that it's much higher. Mm -hmm. um, what the YMCA has really focused in on is the pre-diabetes population, so this is where we have the opportunity to help people pre prevent from developing full-blown diabetes through a program that involves exercise and nutritional counseling. Uh, it started through a partnership with United Healthcare, the YMCA of the USA, Several uh, YMCA's signed on, including um, the Torrance South Bay Y. And then recently, in the past couple of years, we have had a partnership, a fantastic partnership with Torrance Memorial Medical Center. And we were able to work very closely with the folks there to offer the diabetes prevention programs and also screening events right there on site, as well as at the Y. And now we're expanding also to provide the programs uh, through YMCA's in Wilmington and San Pedro as well. And the idea behind the program is to sort of have folks self-evaluate. There's a quick, a, a quick uh, you know, poll or survey that they take um, and just a couple of quick tests at these screening events to get their body mass index and a couple of other measurements. And then you can actually look at a chart and be able to determine whether or not somebody is, in fact, pre-diabetic. And I'll tell you, Patty, in most of these screening events, 
over half of the folks that we've screened have actually been pre-diabetic. So wow. it's a pretty staggering number. So if you look at, you're talking about, you know, 4 million on one side, I would estimate a much higher number is pre-diabetic, and, and we can make an impact and actually help them prevent becoming diabetic. Uh, and and the, the statistics, the data around what we're seeing in terms of progress of individuals participating in this program is really, really encouraging. Their BMIs are coming down. Their, their, uh, you know, their blood sugar is going down. They're losing weight. Um, and they're continuing, which is the most important thing. It's a 16-week program, but we're seeing a good percentage of folks are continuing because we, we provide them with the YMCA membership, so they're continuing their wellness program and their exercise regimen after the program ends. And so during their biannual and annual, um, you know, testing, we're still seeing positive results. Right, right. And, and you know, I don't think that, well, I don't know how, but it, it's when I look at the idea that diabetes is a cause of blindness, kidney failure, heart attack, stroke, um, and at what are what are I mean? It's just staggering that people. If it's something that you could do something about, you know, you would think that we would want to avoid it. Tell us a little bit about what are those preventive things that somebody listening to this who uh, would know that, that that it's not something that is difficult. What are some of the things that people can do if they if they know that they may be pre-diabetic um, to be able to impact? It's as simple as diet and exercise, and I know that sounds like a broken record, um, mm -hmm. but it's because it's true. It, it's you know, if it, they can work in 30 minutes a day, uh, and and I'm not talking about even if you can't make it to the Y, maybe you can walk around the block or or take the dog for a walk, play with the kids in the backyard, you know, whatever it is, 30 minutes of of moderate to to you know a little bit more high impact exercise a day really really makes a huge difference in that. And then the other side of it is just really paying attention to, you know, what you're eating and when you're eating and why you're eating. Um, and that's all part of this program. You know, it's, it's an educational program, but a lot of people listening may say, well, that seems pretty basic, but it's a challenge. I mean, again, think about how many things compete for your time, and that's when people end up in the drive through lane, and that's when people maybe don't have time to eat as healthy as otherwise. And, and so it's getting back to taking care about ourselves and, and really putting that self-care first. Right, and and again, sort of full circle about the importance of that relationship because if now you're involved in a community situation where it becomes your social um, exercise, if you will, to go somewhere where you're meeting friends and then afterwards you're meeting for meals and, and things like that, it all really it plays hand in hand in a healthy lifestyle. It really does. And if you think about it, you know, there's a very specific connection between these individuals in this program because they're all kind of suffering from the same very sobering reality that if they don't do something about it, they will develop diabetes. And that can be a devastating disease, as you said. There, there's lots of physical complications that come along with diabetes. So they've got, they're able to relate to each other at a level that's much deeper just mm -hmm. because they're struggling with the same thing. Right, right, yeah. And in this day and age, I mean, I, I began reading that worldwide they're predicting that by 2030 it will be the seventh um, largest cause of death worldwide. But here in the United States, it is already the seventh largest uh, cause of death. So it's it's staggering that uh, we that that this is something that is preventable, uh, and yet people are making choices not to. And the Y really is one of those community places where um, there's real real tangible solutions to this problem. Yeah. Well, again, it comes down to seeing this as a community need, and really, you know, we're, again, we're uniquely positioned. We have the facilities, we have the personnel. Uh, again, here in Torrance, we just have a fantastic partnership with Torrance Memorial. So having that medical professional presence uh, working with us side by side has been just such a blessing, and it's really made a difference for our program and our participants. And you serve such a diverse, culturally different group here in the Torrance YMCA. Uh, you know, the, you, you have a very, very large Asian community, Hispanic communities, and things like that. Does that play a role in terms of the kind of the education that, that you um, are providing as well? 
to some extent, I think the most important thing that we, we try to do is make sure that whatever we offer we, is the communication wouldn't be a barrier. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the materials that, you know, some of the publications that we put out or promotional information we put out, we want to make sure that it's translated so that people in the community are, are able to read it comfortably in a language that they're most comfortable with. Right, um, right. And, and likewise, you know, if there's a need for translators and so forth, we want to make sure that's available. I, I don't know if you're aware, too, that we actually – uh, offer English as a second language courses right here at the YMCA. Well, you just you you keep um, giving us all of these various different additional things, <laughs> the menu of of, of options of, of programs and community services that you do. Um, I think most people will find, and if they go to their local YMCA, that there is there is more programs than you could ever imagine. Um, as you said, um, Steve, because the, the the Ys really are built up with the input of the community in terms of what that community need needs at that particular time. Yeah, that, that's correct. It's all about what's happening locally I and mean, what, what do you need from us. Right, absolutely. All right, well, we're going to take another, our last break, and when we return, we'll learn a little bit about how YMCAs across America are funded uh, by their own communities and in doing so being able to be more responsive to the, to the needs of the community. So stay with us. We will be right back. the thing about beauty. It's pretty. At AmericanMadeBeauty.com, we're all about the pretty, making it easier for you to find what makes your beauty shine. We have essentially everything you need, and AmericanMadeBeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the U.S. of A. Imagine everything you need from the best hair, skin, and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We also think you're pretty important, so visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Browse, buy, learn. AmericanMadeBeauty.com. When you're looking for bedding, department store prices can shock you. Well, be shocked no more. Sell steak cheap, not cheap steak. That's the motto of Anna's Linens. Although they don't sell steak, they do sell the best bedding, bath, and home decor items. They strive to provide their merchandise at extreme value to their customers, and they do it. Great everyday prices on everything and military discounts. Plus, if you visit them online, they have clearance items and Internet specials. Visit them online now at HealthyLife.net's advertiser page. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credentialed category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bottled brands that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. To learn how you can be part of AmericanMadeBeauty.com, visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com now. Oh, man, it never fails. My suitcase just got ripped apart. Life is a journey. Make it a pleasant one. You Samsonite. You know the name. For almost a century, Samsonite luggage has proved itself to be the worldwide leader in innovative travel solutions. Let it be yours. Visit HealthyLife.net's affiliate Samsonite on our homepage and click to look at the fine luggage from suitcases to golf travel bags. And don't forget, take a look at their travel accessories. Make life a journey. A pleasant one with Samsonite. HealthyLife.net, where positive overcomes negative. You're listening to Radio AMB, where we share the secrets behind the making of health and beauty products and services. Our program sponsor today is Free Your Mane. Free Your Mane is a hair care and body care line based on baobab oil and can be found at freeyourmane.com, that's spelled M-A-N-E, or at anthropology stores. I'm Patty Smucker, and we're here with one of those dedicated professionals that have made health and well-being his career path through the YMCAs. Steve McKellar is the executive director of one of the largest YMCAs in the United States. Steve, I think most people think of the Y as a gym with a joining fee and a monthly membership. Is that the core business model and the way that the YMCAs um, run their operations? No. Actually, the, the number one um, component for us is to, be, to strengthen our community. And so while we do have gym facilities and we mm -hmm. do have memberships available, 
uh, we don't want costs to be a barrier in any way. And so the most important thing that we work to do is to keep costs low and to have financial assistance available to anyone who might have a barrier in their ability to pay. Okay. And so how do you, what are, if, if, the, if the fees aren't really the thing that's covering the overhead, how does a wide number one get built and how does it sustain itself? Well, the most important thing that we do is, is really um, getting out into the community with our case for support. And, and uh, we have wonderful donors who contribute hundreds of thousands of dollars every year to the Torrance South Bay YMCA and they're local right here in this community. Most of them are individuals. Um, also some organizations, and uh, it's all based on primarily our annual support campaign, what that happens in the first quarter of the year. And the neat thing about the annual campaign is that 100% of the funds we raise go directly to people here in Torrance. It's all about the community supporting people in the community, and I, I really get excited about that because there, there's no overhead, there's no 10% administrative fees, none of that. Every dollar that we raise does go to people here in the Torrance community, either in the form of financial assistance, program subsidies, or just keeping fees lower than, than otherwise. And that's true across the board. If people need financial assistance for any program or a membership, we're able to offer that to them. And it's based on that, that annual community support campaign. Right. And so is that, I mean, I understand that that's the way that it works here in Torrance, but is that true of the way the Y organization works across the United States and across the world? It is. Every YMCA is, is a charity. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we're not perceived as a charity by many people. If you walk down the street here in Torrance or anywhere in the U.S. and ask somebody to name the top three charities, most of the time the YMCA is not going to be on that list. And so mm -hmm. that's a real challenge for us and nationally as well as locally. We want to be at the top of that list because the YMCA actually is the largest charity in the United States. Uh, so we're really we're working hard to change that perception. And in our case, uh, we've been very fortunate. We have hundreds of volunteers who come in and uh, work as campaigners during our annual support campaign. Um, you know, talking with neighbors, calling previous donors, asking folks to support the YMCA, and they've, they've made a huge difference over the years. And so culturally, we've really benefited from that. Um, and we're able to raise quite a bit of funds, which is great because we need every dollar we raise. Like I said, 100% goes right back to folks here at Torrance. Right, right. And having participated, I, I will say that, you know, it's really been, it's really the way that it's done in terms of, you mentioned there's the major gifts campaign and then there's the teams campaign. Let's talk a little bit about what the, what the, the differences are between those. Well, the major gifts campaign is, is the first campaign we run very, very early in the year, right up to the beginning of the year, and that's where we're really reaching out to our major donors who are giving higher donation amounts, usually over a thousand, in some cases ten, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars, um, and th those are huge, just transformational gifts um, that we're for so fortunate to receive every year, and uh, those really kickstart our ability to fund the programs and the financial assistance we need to, to offer. But the team's campaign is much larger. That's where we have 300, 400 campaigners who are working. And even though you know the, the gifts, each individual gift may be a little bit smaller, um, it really adds up to get us over the finish line. This past year, our team's campaign raised over $225,000. So they really make a huge impact. But the other important thing about both the major gift and team's campaign is Again, that relationship and that connection. Those, our annual support campaign is the largest adult leadership development program that the YMCA offers. So it's not just about fundraising, but it's about developing leaders, people who are campaigning and asking the community to support the YMCA are receiving training and skills in those areas of how to interact with others and how to lead the way and how to lead their teams. So there's a lot of very good positive development that comes out of those campaigns. And positive relationships. I mean, I really think that, you know, I, I had the privilege of um, participating in the Teams campaign and actually for three or four years um, was the, um, I don't remember what the, the name was, but basically the person that led the, the meetings with two or three hundred people in the room, making it fun, engaging people. Every, every um, year there was a different theme. Uh, we dressed up in costumes and it was, it was, it really became our social circle once a week 
week we got together for dinner and we created great relationships, relationships that 20 years later are some of my best friends. Um, and so that was that was very uh, a lot of fun, as well as moving over then to the major gift campaign, which is a little bit more you know the business people within the community, but people that I have for as long 10, 15, 20 years done business with. Um, so it really is a way in which, like you said, that leadership leadership element comes together and makes it very exciting, and where people become very passionate about um, being part of uh, of this community um, and making a contribution um, and developing individually. So I can say um, that I'm a poster person for the way that the programs that the Y has created um, really have um, impacted my life in a in a really positive way. Well, I think you've touched on the, you know, those really important elements of the fact that it's not, it, it, it's another opportunity to build community. I mean, those those dinners for the team campaigns and the, and the breakfast for the major gifts campaign, you know, those are great networking events. They're a lot of fun. We there's a lot of pageantry. We believe in, you know, having as much fun as possible. But there's also, you know, great conversations and connections that are made and introductions that happen, and the energy just buzzes in those rooms because people see firsthand what good they're doing and, and the progress they're making and, and able to celebrate and support each other as, as they move forward. It's, it's just, it's the most energizing program. It really is. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Steve, what's ahead? What, what do you see, um, where do you see uh, the YMCA and particularly your Y going um, in the near future? Well, for me, I really, you know, number one, I think it's just really continuing to build awareness in the community, and so opportunities like you've given me today to be on the show is just so important, and I genuinely appreciate it. But I think our board has really identified a couple of real critical initiatives that we that we need to focus on. The first is that uh, we want to make sure that we're um, present to all of the communities in our service area. And the Torrance South Bay YMCA has a fairly expansive service area. Um, and so especially in some of those communities where uh, it could be a little bit more financial challenges or maybe transportation could be a barrier, we're going to be a little bit more intentional about getting, I'm calling it getting the Y outside the walls, but really getting out into the communities and into the neighborhoods. And whether we're offering programs on site or offering a means of people to access our programs, really making sure that if there's a barrier there, we're removing that. Mm -hmm. And we'll be looking to partner with the school districts. We'll be looking to partner with local entities, churches, organizations, and just to ensure that anyone who is in need of our program to access our programs. And then the, the second thing is, you know, looking at the financial realities that are facing us, the cost of operations, and ensuring that we don't turn anyone away. So really continuing to expand and enhance our fundraising efforts so that we, we know that we're um, going to be able to support our work in the community. Right, great. Well, you, you've, if you didn't know before, you now know the YMCA is over 160 years old, the largest charity uh, organization in the United States, and each Y is built by the community, for the community, and it's its, it's success over all of these um, almost two, two centuries is based on being um, a social a, a social movement um, and, and uh, relevant and responsible to what's going on in each community. So if you're not a member, go check out your local YMCA. And, Steve, thank you. Thanks for being here with us, and thank you for the important work that you do every day. No, Patty, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So that will do it for us today. Don't miss our program next week with my guest host, um, Alicia, Alicia Benkovich, uh, and she'll be bringing you social beauty with makeup artist Christina Vega. Don't miss it. Uh, send your questions and comments to requests at American Made Beauty. I'm Patty Smucker. You can hear Radio AMB on HealthyLife.net. Thank you for listening to Radio AMB, where we think pretty is pretty important in all things in beauty.